Welcome back everyone, uh, Rob Joswiak here. I am so excited and actually a little nervous, which rarely <laughs> happens. I've had this uh, interview idea in my head for quite a while with me today, uh, Mr. Robert Anders. Robert, how are you today, sir? Okay, so far so good. So far so good. Uh, Mr. Anders and I met seven years ago, almost to the day in February of 17 right as uh, myself and all my uh, A100, the 189th colleagues, came into the Foreign Service in uh, early 2017. Um, Robert was and his wife Sue were uh, at the Dark Core House to welcome us. I got a picture with you then, sir, and uh, you were in my mind all these years, and so I just want to thank you right off the top for taking time out of your schedule uh, and having me. Uh, for, for those who don't know, uh, Mr. Anders is a retired Foreign Service officer, and that is, the, he's the first retired Foreign Service officer I will have interviewed and, and posted to this YouTube channel. But he's also well known as uh, being portrayed in the movie Argo, which for those who doesn't, don't know, uh, was about the Iran hostage situation, 1979, if I'm not mistaken, sir? Right. Yeah. I was born in 82, so a few <laughs> years before my time. <laughs> Um, but, uh, so you, you know, aside from being a foreign service officer kind of, uh, uh, came, came to fame or notoriety in that regard, uh, Mr. Anders has done a lot of press and media, uh, about that. We will touch on it today, sir, but I really wanted you to talk about, um, your, your foreign service career. You mentioned your, uh, you know, son-in-law, your family, and just tell the viewers about your foreign service career and then we'll kind of go from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, before I became interested in the Foreign Service, I was uh, in, uh, I was a veteran of World War II, and then I was wounded, and, and so I got a little where earlier. Were you, where were you wounded, sir? In Germany, just over the border near uh, Strasbourg. Strasbourg. Yeah. Uh, before before you continue, I think it's important uh, for for you to let the audience know you got a birthday coming up next month. Next month, right? Yeah. Uh, how many years young are you going to be? I will be ninety nine. Ninety nine. Next month. Uh, I I I don't. I, I know you're not a liar, but it's hard to believe. <laughs> I, I it varies with me. Sometimes I wake up and. I feel like I'm only 90. <laughs> Other times I feel like 190. 190, yeah. <laughs> so uh, World War II veteran, sir, and you're, you're, you were injured in Germany, so then did you come back a little early, as you were saying? Right. Yeah. I was, uh, uh, that was a, a lucky departure because I was wounded in the hand right here. Yeah, go ahead. Put your... <laughs> And uh, actually, I had my hand up next to my head like this, so in the, in a foxhole. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I remember uh, when that happened. To me, of course, I never forgot, forgot it. But uh, it, I, uh, I knew that I was very lucky because I have it right here that right came in that way. Uh, but I, I was uh, felt good enough to say goodbye to my friends. So well, I'll see you back in the states. Yeah. So what year did you come back, sir? Well, this happened. This happened on December nineteenth, nineteen forty-four. Right. Yeah. And yeah, so I came back in a, uh, a little after that, in January, January February, forty-five. Forty-five. Yeah. yeah. So uh, that was... Uh, well, thank you for your service, sir. I just, just yeah. want to say that. Not only foreign service, but before that, military, military service. Military service, right, yeah. And at this point, as you're getting out of the military and World War II's ending, do you know about the Foreign Service or Diplomatic Corps? I didn't really know about it. Yeah. Uh, I, somehow I heard about Georgetown and Foreign Service School. Yeah. And I was getting uh, a little tired of... Pre-med. <laughs> so if, you, if, if we have any pre-med majors out there, you don't know. You might end up in the Foreign Service. <laughs> yeah, so right. you hear about Georgetown, the School of Foreign Service, right. and then what do you decide? To try to transfer? Yes. Yeah. That's, that's correct. And I took the Foreign Service exam in 1950. 
1950. Yeah. All right, now, this is a big point for a lot of people, even today in 2024. Yeah. They take the test, and then they don't pass. Or what, some... what, what happened the first time was I passed everything except the language. Yeah, they had a language test at that point. Foreign yeah. language? Or in yeah, foreign language. Yeah, yeah. Which, which one did you test German. it? German. German, right. German. Being from Milwaukee, uh, there's yeah. a lot of German uh, activity there. Right. And, uh, but mostly when I grew up, many uh, Germans in Milwaukee had, uh, you know, Still were, were Americans. Were, you know, right, yeah. After World War I. Yeah. So you failed, the, you failed the language test. I failed the language test, right. <laughs> I ended up taking the German exam, I think it was seven or eight times, actually. Uh, so in passing all the other stuff, did they just say, as soon as you can pass German, then you'll be in? Or did you have to go back through everything? At that time, you could... Uh, sort of a, a, a temporary appointment. Uh-huh. And you still had to take the German exam sometime. Right, yeah. So my first assignment there was to Rangoon, Burma. Which yeah. Now, uh, it's... They call it something else. What do they call it? Uh, Burma, uh, Myanmar. Oh, yeah. Myanmar. Yeah. 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 Right. Anyway, so that's where I finally took the German exam again and passed it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, so what year do you what year do you end up entering the Foreign Service after? 1956. 56. See, and this it's so funny how some things are timeless, Mr. Anders. A lot of people I tell on the channel, like me, I got out of the military in 2010. I failed the test miserably, yeah. forgot about it for a while took it in 2015 and entered the Foreign Service in 2017 when I met you. Right. And so it's almost a timeless story that maybe when you start trying to when actually you get in, yeah. there's, you know, you had six years from 1950 yeah. to 56. Yeah. So, so go from there. You, you, go to, you go to Rangoon off the bat. Yeah, and that was, I had no uh, interest or, or little knowledge of, of Asia, especially that, that part of it. Right. Um, but it was uh, fascinating. Mm -hmm. there were really like uh, like Rangoon. Yeah. Rangoon. Um, it, and it was a small embassy, so uh -huh. so we had the chance to to uh, know about and participate in you know the main business. Uh, right. That you weren't like in a. And you, uh, what type of officer were you, sir? Uh, Were you a Paul Econ? No, I was. Uh, I was just the uh, um, consular. Consular, yeah, yeah. And I was. I was the only consular officer. officer yeah. So you know, you're right. You're in the action. Yeah. Right, yeah. In the action. Exactly. And uh, uh, you got to. You know, you're dealing with uh, any American important officials that came to visit or, or not that many so right going to going to Rangoon <laughs> in the late but, 50s you, know, you yeah were, you were uh, participating uh, yeah and meeting them and uh, you know it's, uh, so you weren't using any German there I assume no not, not <laughs> that to where I passed the test on. yeah oh yeah okay <laughs> yeah so um, where, where do they send you where do you go after that it was it was it standard in those days to do uh, like a two initial tours as an entry-level officer yeah, I guess you could say that. Mostly that's what the, uh, people did. Sometimes they, you spend your first your first to write in the, in the department. In, in D.C.? Yeah. Yeah. But mostly, uh, I think most people had... Uh, o overseas. Time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Where do you go from there, sir? Well, the, the, the next... Uh, then I, I did a tour... In, in Washington. Right you came back to D.C.? Yeah. Yeah. Then uh, Manila. Manila. Yeah. All right, you weren't doing too bad. Yeah, so that was uh, that was interesting too, but that, that of course, is, is a, a, a big embassy, so. Yeah. So you were, like, like in, in Burma, I, I was the only Cons yeah, officer. right. But in Manila, oh, yeah, the, the Philippines. Like Twenty. Yeah, officers. right. Mostly just uh, issuing uh, 
visas. But they, uh, the, that Philippines is a place where they, uh, everybody wants to go to the state. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of a lot of applicants at the window. Yeah. 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 Um, and that's true today. We still have a lot of consular officers in Manila, Manila oh, to this oh, yeah. to this day. Yeah. Yeah. So um, and then I left the, the Foreign Service. And, and, you did. Yeah. And. Uh, that was in 1964. 64, okay. Just just after the Kennedy uh, administration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was... So you, had, you ended up having a break in, in foreign service. Yeah, oh yeah. And and how long how long were you out of the foreign service? Ten years. Ten years? Right. Wow. So you were in from like 56 to 64. Yeah, and I came back in... I, I came back in as a uh, civil service yeah. employee. Yeah. In, oh, in the State Department. Yeah, still doing consular work. At first, and then I, uh, I uh, transferred to Department uh, uh, Bureau of Public Affairs. Oh yeah, I'm a PD officer. Yeah, That's I why know, I enjoy I doing know. these videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So that was very interesting and and, and enjoyable. Right? Yeah, and. Uh, I sort of got to do my own my own thing. You know? Yeah, and uh, I uh, dealt with uh, organizations that have an interest uh, in in foreign affairs. Right, know? right. So uh, I would go to like uh, annual meetings of different farmers groups or business yeah. groups or domestically. Yeah, yeah, domestically. So and I would sort of keep track of what was going on in yeah. these things and tell my boss, I think I should go to this meeting. Right. So That's I'd great. Go to these meetings around the country, like um, New Orleans and New York. It, it shows foreign service or even civil service in the State Department, you have to have versatility and you never know yeah. where you're going to end up, oh, you know, then absolutely. and now. Yeah, yeah. But now, so we're in the 70s now, right? Mid to late 70s, you're doing this. If, if I'm following the timeline right. I think I think we're getting close to when you go to Iran, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, so I was enjoying this public affairs job. It yeah. It was interesting and fun. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm a PD officer. But yeah, it's, yeah. It's a lot of work, but a lot of fun as well. Yeah, and you know, you get to meet big shots. You get to meet big shots. <laughs> yeah. I really enjoyed that job. Yeah. But um, did they come to you to switch, or how did what ended up? What took you away from that, or what ended up leading the public you? affairs? Yeah, because you end up in Iran at some point, obviously. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm just gonna, just gonna you're getting your plug in for public affairs and PD work. I appreciate yeah. that. And um, so, well, I, you know, this is a civil service. Right. Uh, every now and then, they have different programs that you could transfer to foreign service reserve officer. So I thought, there's a chance to get back into the real foreign service. I mean, so uh, I didn't have to take any tests or anything. <laughs> so I could still get in not, not knowing German too well. <laughs> but uh, anyway, um, so I put in my name and uh, I could transfer to the foreign service. And uh, the, the, the for, uh, overseas job was available, you know, in um, Tehran. Yeah, I said, that, 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 time, that's no longer on the list, as you know. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I know what happened there, right? <laughs> um, so then, um, okay, I'll go there. At that time, when I first said. Okay, I'll go to Iran. Yeah. You could bring your family. You right. Know. But as time went on, you know. You, you what year did you initially go to Iran? 1979. 79? Yeah. And you you took your family? I didn't take You didn't. Because by that time. By, it, by the time you were set yeah, to go. So you can go. It was unaccompanied. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, well, okay, I'll get you back in the forest. And consular work again, yeah? 
Right. Yeah. Concert work. Right. And my family, they they came to uh, grief to Greece. Athens. Yeah. Yeah. So this is always education. I don't know if they called it that then, sir. But uh, when the family stays one place semi-close to where the officer goes unaccompanied, they call that safe haven. So yeah. your family was safe havening yeah. in yeah. in yeah, right. Greece, and you were in Iran. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. And uh, that's close enough so if I could get any, if I had some leave, I could get it. Right. Get Just to pop over and see the family. family. Yeah. Right. But then, of course, uh, the embassy was taken over, and that was pretty much fun. You know, and, uh, they, uh, the embassy there was a big compound, you know, yeah. 20 some acres. Or so. Right. And uh, the council was actually was uh, was not in the main building in the center. It was up up against the, the back wall of the compound. Of the compound, yeah, right. And uh, we gradually, quickly taken uh, taken over by the demonstrators. Right. There were demonstrations every day, but right. This they one, were ongoing. Yeah. It wasn't yeah. just like one day everything yeah. happened. Yeah. It was no, day after no, day. Yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, people came over the main the main gate, you know, and were in the building at the back of the compound, and uh, we look out the window, see people milling around and trying to get into our building, and uh, there were there were about thirty people in the building, mm -hmm. uh, maybe about twenty visitors, uh, Iranians and Americans. Uh, and we said they leave the building right. first. So there were ten Americans left in the building, and uh, we then we left. Uh, we could go out into the, the back street. Uh, yeah. Um, so we separated into about two groups of five. One group they were immediately captured. Yeah. Uh, our little group of five we got away, and we went to the down to the British Embassy, uh -huh. and we got we got within a block of that, and they were having some activity there too. So, yeah. so then we all went to my apartment, which was within walking distance. Uh, anyway, without going into a lot of detail, we... Uh, I mean, they made a movie about this. Yeah, they made a movie. In fact, it's, the movie was much more exciting than the real thing. Well, but still, it's 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 absolute American history. I mean, you're yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. and um, I, I think, Mr. Anders, you're the you're the you were the oldest of the of the crew, right? Of That's those right. of those five. Yeah, right. So as I as I recall, you end up with the Canadians because I'll never forget when I met you. You showed your business card mm -hmm. from the from yeah. you know, that card. Where you were a movie producer or whatever, mm -hmm. but you said to me when we met seven years ago, you said, "Rob, you said always find the Canadians." Yeah, and that's what you told me, that's and that's stuck in my head. <laughs> and I, I, I have anytime I've been overseas, the Canadians are our close friends and allies, mm -hmm. and and so now uh, your your apartment. How do you do? You go from your apartment. I know you guys. What I mean. You end up with the Canadians, yeah. And from when the embassy's taken over to when you actually leave the country, how how long of a time period are you hanging out with the Canadian, kind of, you know, in secrecy with the Canadians? I forget how long of a time period that was. Uh, yeah, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it was about four months. Well, about three or four months. Three or four months. Yeah. Let me ask. To, can I ask you this? Yeah. If you're watching this, you're thinking, why would I want to join the Foreign Service and maybe end up in a, you know, a tough place or a scary place? What would you say to somebody who might have apprehension? I mean, you, you survived and, you know, it's, yeah. it's quite a tale. But what advice would you have for a young American who's thinking about joining the Foreign Service or the military for that matter? But obviously the channel's geared towards the Foreign Service. What advice would you have as someone who's been through, you know, something so... Um, yeah. Dangerous yet interesting, I guess is how I word it. Well, I mean, dangerous but interesting. I mean, that's exactly the core of uh, the way I looked at it all. I mean, exactly. it was fascinating. I mean, it was, uh, 
I like to see the world and experience different uh, people, different cultures, and and uh, sure, sometimes it's uh, uncomfortable. I mean, it's you know difficult climates here now right. around the world, difficult to people who who, who who don't like Americans. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. Uh, so it's interesting and fascinating problems to deal with, and you can feel like it's very worthwhile. I mm -hmm. mean, you're doing something important and useful to to our country, and mm -hmm. uh, at, the, at the same time, that is just fascinating as a yeah. as a traveler, right? Anyway. Uh, what what was it like when you were going to the airport? So the, you're there for the four months. This okay. you know you can watch the movie Argo's the movie. Yeah. I'll put the link below. I'll put some pictures up with him and Ben Affleck. You've met him several times. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. And uh, what was it like? What was that feeling like when you guys were going to the airport and you got on the plane? That had to be just a rush of adrenaline. Uh, well, uh, yeah, it, it was. Uh, it was uh, okay, just a, a little bit of background to that part. We were in touch with with Bruce Langan, who was a DCM, who was a prisoner, but he was in a special situation because he was a, a top officer. Right. Anyway, we were in touch with him by phone. And then one day he says, uh, we can't use this phone anymore, you're on your own, good luck. You know. <laughs> so that'd be it, that'd, that'd, that'd be it. And sir, were you leading the group of five as the as the oldest officer, or was there someone in your five that? How how did you manage that? I was sort of uh, I was a, the the top officer. Yeah. yeah, we weren't. We were all. We were not all staying together. Yet. Mm. Uh, but anyway, um, at that point, when Bruce Lane said that. The phone down there. Good so then I said, okay, I called a guy from the New Zealand uh -huh. embassy. Yeah. And he said, uh, well, uh, and I said, well, there are about five of us. You know, oh, sorry, I can't do anything. You know? Yeah, for help. Yeah. Yeah. So then I, then I called my Canadian friend. Yeah. So, and, uh, he said, don't worry, come on over here, you can stay with us. You know? Yeah. So, and we arranged to go to, four of us went to my friend's place, and two of us went and stayed with the Canadian ambassadors. Yeah. Now, we had a much better deal, because the Canadian ambassador had visitors often, you know, he had a Big house. Yeah, well, DCMs and ambassadors typically do, yeah, you know? Yeah, right, exactly. For those who've never been overseas, you yeah. can see some interesting houses for the higher-ranking officers. Yeah. The other people didn't, didn't know this guy. I was the only one. Who, right. Yeah. Had made contact with him before all the uproar in Tehran. He, you, uh, he was your contact. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, four of us stayed... Uh, in his place, mm -hmm. and two of them stayed with the ambassador. Mm -hmm. But nice, big, comfortable house. Yeah, and we, we, I read, I read, I think twenty some books there. He had a big library. Because you couldn't leave the house. No, we couldn't leave the house. And that's when the plan to get you out was being formulated and worked, right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, so we really enjoyed it there. <laughs> <laughs> And, uh, so but it still had to be nerve wracking to not. Well, it was. It varied. Now, see, I, was, I had the other people were new in the foreign service, new in right living overseas living and overseas. The, yeah, that lifestyle. And uh, there were two married couples. Yeah, two guys were you know, embassy officers, but they couldn't bring their wives. Yeah, they and so they worked at the at the embassy. Right. Yeah. So. You know, I'd been in, you know, Burma and the Philippines, and it's our, you know. Not to mention Germany. Yeah, Germany. <laughs> the right. war, yeah. yeah. World War Two. my gosh. Yeah. So you were taking it a little, 
you were taking it more in stride than the others. Yeah. 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 They were as much as one can take such a yeah, thing in stride. Yeah. yeah, they were sometimes uptight a little bit, you know. Uh, <laughs> well, I was bothering me when I was out taking a sun bath. Uh, <laughs> what in the backyard? Yeah, in the backyard. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, no, we all look kind of one. All right, so you're there, you read over 20 books. Now <laughs> now it's time to go to the airport, yeah? Yeah, well, yeah. A couple of days uh, before we left, a couple CIA guys mm -hmm. came. Yeah. All portrayed in the movie, so we're not talking about anything that hasn't already been talked about. Right, yeah. So uh, they gave us, so we came here to get you out of here. Yeah, right. Okay. And we got three different plans, you know. And one was there a bunch of school teachers. I forget the officer. And then, but the main story of it, you're a movie people. You're a movie director, sir. Yeah, well, I was, I was. Uh, Location director. Location director. Location director. Here we go. And I'm going to put a picture. He's got his, like, uh, Hollywood set with his name on it over here as yeah. well. Chair that you would have on a Hollywood and you've carried this car with you since since then, right, sir? Because I remember when I met you seven years ago, you showed it to me. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. And I'll, I'll get a picture of this, but th this is it. Yeah. And this is what got you out of the Iran. Yeah. Location manager. You were scouting some locations in Iran. Yeah. Nothing to do with consular. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's amazing, sir. Anyway. I'll get a picture of that. I'll I mean, with the video. CIA, they, I mean, they had worked diligently right. and covered everything. I mean, uh, yeah, I had a, had a Canadian passport. And, yeah. Uh, and uh, they had uh, they had a complete movie script and everything. So we were just exploring there and I'll take a good location for to make this movie. You know. And uh, I have to ask, sir, in your mind, they come to you, you're getting ready to leave, this is the plan. What was your thought? Uh, I was <laughs> mad at the Iranians. I said, can they get together still? You know, we can uh, get back at them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, so uh, you were ready to go, and you were like, we're yeah. going to do this. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you yeah. did. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. But right. going to the airport had to be, I mean, you know, uh, I've used a diplomatic passport. I was in South America and then Asia. Just going to an airport with your diplomatic passport is, it's a certain feeling, you know? Yeah. Even though normal business, nothing on the scale of this. Yeah. That had to be wild. <laughs> yeah, and one of our group was very leery. Of yeah. The whole thing. Uh-huh. The, did the movie do a good job of portraying everybody's personality in the process? Did What are your thoughts? Yeah. 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 yeah that was that was good. Yeah. But the, well, that was, uh, was more, more exciting than the real thing. More exciting. Yeah. yeah. So, sir, when you get back, yeah. I mean, it was a, it was, it was major American news. Again, I don't remember it. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, just a couple of years before my time. Well, even I wouldn't, I wouldn't remember it as a baby either. But I mean, even as someone born a few years after that, it's it's huge American history. You know, yeah. do you take leave? Do you have like a, a, a chilling out period? Does your I assume your family came back from Greece because you don't retire until 1990. You told me when yeah, I came right. in today. So you've still got like another 11, 10, 11 years in the Foreign Service. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, then, yeah, that was the best part of the Foreign Service. That yeah. Was, uh, you were 10 or 11 years. After, after, you yeah. know, yeah. Yeah, when we got got back, we got this, you know, big welcome. Right. You know, and, uh, but did you have to stay quiet about the, about what happened for a, for a good while, right? We had to yeah. stay completely quiet for... Uh, Couple days only. Yeah. But the Canadians broke the news. The Canadians broke the news. Yeah. Wow. So well, the, otherwise, yeah. it, you know, they they, they were going to keep it quiet. The department told us, you know, you're going to probably better if you stay on some military base in the U.S. and you know, see lie what low. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, so the Canadians broke. So, uh, we got a big welcome, you know. Yeah. Back in the department. Right. I had a 
give a little talk about our experience. Here. Yeah. At, uh, in, uh, so how long, like, are you in the States for a while, just kind of settling down, or do they end up giving you an assignment not long after? I stayed in the States until um, four or five months. Yeah. Maybe. And I uh, I traveled, did, uh, traveled around a little bit. To yeah. Talks, you know, right, and, about your experience. Yeah. Yeah. And... Um, You've done a lot of interviews over the years, haven't you? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> they just never stop, do they? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Again, I really appreciate your time today. But, you know, I'm, I'm, I see, I haven't done it just for, uh, I don't know, maybe a, a year or two. Yeah. And uh, I'm starting, you know, I'm, uh, I'm uh, 98 now, and I'm starting to forget things. So. Wow. <laughs> I'm 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 less than half of that, and I forget things. So you're not alone. Uh -huh. But I I thought it was important to come over here today and and talk to you um, because I mean you are a World War II veteran. You have I mean in and out of the Foreign Service. Um, you know you had over end up having what about thirty years of federal service. Yeah. 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 And you retired at. What sixty four and nine sixty five sixty five right yeah. in nineteen ninety, <laughs> I was I turned eight that year, <laughs> but it shows you know and now I've been in the foreign service seven years and, um you know uh, our our organization and the department wouldn't be what it is without people like you, and I felt it important because I get a lot of young people and and, and aspiring foreign service officers mm -hmm. or even people just looking to come into the government. Yeah. watching the channel and I thought, you know, I, I gotta go see Mr. Anders. So I'm glad we were able to <laughs> glad we were able to hook up. What were your last tours, sir? Where were you in the eighties after the whole Iran? Uh, my first uh assignment was well I wanted to talk to the the uh, Well leave, if you don't mind leaving that out I can get a picture oh, yeah. of it, yeah, before I leave. Um well, let's see Melbourne. Right? You went to Osro after that? Where? No, no way. Oslo. Yeah. Oslo. Well, okay. I went to, I, I mean, I talked to a personnel and they were saying, uh, uh, I'm good about to have to transfer. And I, uh, I, I, I forget exactly. There's something about, how did I get there? And I, they, they get back to Washington. Oh, I, they just, uh, they made it happen. The, the Air Force, yeah. the US Air Force took, took us back. You know, yeah. we had a big uh, 727, just the six of us, and, and uh, so I just came back in the airport. But and this person, another guy, said, "Well, you you can't do that. You didn't have travel orders." <laughs> anyway, uh, so. Uh, person on the stage, you know, well, where do you want to go? You yeah. Know? What's open? Right. right. So uh, always needs of the service, right? Yeah. Even if you <laughs> even if you get held up somewhere. <laughs> yeah. No, so I said what was available was Oslo was uh, one of them and uh, I said, oh, that sounds great. Yeah. So I and uh, uh, Oslo uh, always sounds great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. That would that's that was, uh, yeah, probably my favorite. I, I liked everything, I think. And then did you do one more after Oslo before mm -hmm. retiring? After Oslo, I did, I, I did. Uh, Vienna. No, 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 I did. Uh, oh, what did I do? Jamaica. Did I that place? Jamaica? <laughs> yeah. You went to Jamaica. Jamaica. Yeah. Yeah. Came back to Western Hemisphere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that was a. And you kept doing consular, right? You stayed doing consular. Yeah. 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 And uh, that's, well, Jamaica was interesting. It was uh, not 100% yeah. enjoyable. And then uh, I did, uh, I did, I took a, well, I don't know what you call it, but a uh, job. Lower, lower than downstretch. Downstretch. That's it. Yeah, downstretch. You have up stretches and down stretches. Now this yeah. is good. So we're 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 teaching them some terminology. Yeah. A downstretch is let's say you're an O2. 
you do an 03 job, or you're an 01, you do an 02 job. An upstretch is if you're a three and you do a two job, you're a yeah. two, you do a one job. So you yeah. did a downstretch and where'd you go? Vienna. Vienna, oh wow. I, I downstretched for Vienna as well. Yeah. And that ended up being your last tour. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you saw the whole world, pretty much. Yeah. 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 As a matter of fact, I went around the world. Yeah. Because uh, I was in the Army you know, in Europe. And, mm -hmm came back to the States, and then uh, years went by, and then I got in Fort Sur, went to uh, Rangoon, right. and then transferred back to Washington, and I kept going yeah. uh, westward. Right. So you've been all around the world. Yeah. That's, uh, it took me what, what, like 14 years. 14 years. <laughs> but that's a, that's a good message for the viewers, sir. You can see the world, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, the Foreign Service offers, and, 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 you know, I tell people on the channel, and to your story, it's not all a bed of roses. Yeah. Um, there are challenges. There are, are difficulties. But um, there's really not many other careers that offer, mm -hmm. you know, what the Foreign Service does. And as you've shown today, uh, it's very rewarding. Sir, let's end with this. What advice do you have to young people watching? Not as, I keep saying young people, but... You know, most people trying to get most people trying to get into the foreign service are thirty five and younger, and we're both above that age, as you know. <laughs> <laughs> so, what advice, if you want to, you know, say say to the say to the few people that watch my channel? Sometimes I have ones that get a lot of viewers. What do you What do you want to say to someone who wants to join the foreign service? I don't know. It's just a fascinating, interesting life and experience. And it's you're making a contribution to our country, and have an interesting and enjoyable experience. Yeah, doing it. Right. Uh, Would you have changed anything, sir? Yeah, if I. I knew German <laughs> so if you don't pass the foreign service officer <laughs> test the first time or at some point a language test I feel Brazilian or Portuguese mm -hmm. Brazilian Portuguese the first time I needed two more months and it felt like the end of the world back in 2017 yeah. uh, and, and now my wife's from Brazil so I speak Portuguese oh, I yeah. have to you know yeah. but um, that sir you touch on so many things that are timeless in the foreign service you know um, but I just want to thank you. This has been so much fun. It's an honor. Uh, I know you've done a lot of interviews over the years, but I felt like as a retired Foreign Service officer and given the uniqueness of your career mm -hmm. and because of your military World War II service, I mean, um, unfortunately, there aren't, there aren't a lot of your uh, contemporaries and fellow veterans yeah. still around. I felt it very important to come out here. We're in Silver Spring. You've mm -hmm. retired, been out here 14 years, you said, mm -hmm. and do this interview. And so um, I just want to thank everybody for watching. If you you know have any questions or whatever, you can put them below. I usually reply. I'll get some links in there. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Andrews, if you, you want me to include anything for the, for, the, for the viewers, I can put it down below where there's a little, like, synopsis of the video. And, um, you know, thanks for watching the channel. And, sir, it, it's an absolute honor. Mm -hmm. Uh, thank you so much for having me today and, and for taking time out of your schedule to do this uh, uh, yeah. on the channel. Yeah, well, you're entirely welcome. I enjoyed doing it. Uh, I think I forgot a few things or dates and places. They, they can watch the movie to learn the rest of the yeah. details. <laughs> right. Very few Foreign Service officers can say that. Go watch the movie about me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. thank you again, sir. And thanks for watching. Uh, I'll be back with another video after this. Uh, this is, it's dated, but today is February 10th, the day before the Super Bowl 2024 uh, with retired Foreign Service Officer Robert Anders. Okay. Sir. Okay. Amazing.